one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. For my soul longs and even faints for you. For here my heart is sad.
So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Before the day, before the light, before the world revolved around the sun, God on high stepped down into time and wrote the story of His love for everyone. He has filled our hearts with wonder So that we always Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh, 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 my soul, worship His soul. Yeah. 
be to God in a moment. Harry, can you unmute yourself and um, please share with us the scripture reading for the day? You're still muted. Okay, there you go. Am I unmuted? You're, you're on now. I'm on now. Yes. Okay. Uh, this week, the scripture passage is taken from Matthew chapter 21, verses 23 to 32. The authority of Jesus is questioned. Verses, verse 23. When he, entered the, when he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd for all of them regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. The parable of the two sons, verse 28. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in a vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe in. Those are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Would you please pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Once there was a man who owned an auto parts store. The business was going quite well, but the manager's work was kind of questionable. There were even suspicions that he was stealing. The owner had two children living in the capital. On a long holiday, when the children came home, the man called his eldest son and asked him, son, take care of the store for me. I need a manager that I can trust. The son promptly replied to his father, of course, dad, that's what I would like to do. I'm going to take over the store someday. However, he went back to the city, he went on and on doing what he likes to do and never came back to take over the business. The father then went to speak to the younger son, asking, son, would you please take care of my store? However, the son immediately said to him, oh God, I don't want to take care of the store, father. That kind of business is still not for me. I prefer to stay where I am in the capital. The father did not force any of his children to do anything. He made the invitation, but respected their decision. Well, later he received the call. It was a younger son saying that he was coming back to help his father with the store. The son obviously had thought long and hard and decided to do what his father had asked him to do. 
Well, as you can tell, this is a modern version of the parable of the two sons told by Jesus. It is a portrait of the relationship between parents and children, between God and God's people. In today's parable, Jesus stands before the religious leaders of his day. Those people who are of good fame and good appearance, but without much inner devoutness and spirituality. The father said to his first son, son, go to work in the vineyard today. And the son replied, yes, sir. But he does not. I think he had a good intention to not make his father mad, but what is the value of that kind of good intention? Human life is filled with good intentions. I wish I had apologized, but I didn't have the courage. I had planned to buy the milk, but I just didn't get to. I was going to pick up the kids from school, but just couldn't make it in time. Good intention is very similar to the definition of almost. Someone creatively describes almost as the following. Almost is a well-known figure. He usually accompanies our daily lives. If you think about it, almost is not even halfway there. The person almost healed is still sick. When it comes to faith, the almost is fatal. You almost believe in Jesus as your savior, so you are almost saved, but you are still not yet saved. Good intention alone does not produce good fruits. Oftentimes it leads to nothing. It does not quite achieve its intent. It doesn't produce. It is said for the unspoken. And in spiritual life, lacking true faith and repentance, we are led away from God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God, it says in the Hebrews. A popular saying goes, the road to hell is marked by people who had good intentions in life. True or not, it is worrying to say the least. And it makes no sense to make it look like as if you live a good and religious life to support a facade that hides disbelief. Because God sees beyond appearances. God sees through all and God knows what's inside our hearts. While the Pharisees, the scribes, and the priests in Jesus' time did not recognize Jesus for the message of salvation announced by Jesus was not the same as that which they preached and announced to the people. They taught salvation through works, which means in order for you to be saved, you need to do certain things. So they demanded things from people, which they often couldn't even do themselves. And for the Pharisees, Jesus was nothing more than an outcast who sat at the table with other sinners. For the scribes, Jesus was just a low class who didn't have a proper educa education. And countless times the scribes and the Pharisees were united in the various traps that they set for Jesus, trying to get him to affirm something against the law of Moses or even in favor of the Roman Empire, their enemy. They did not accept the authority with which Jesus taught the people, calling everyone to repent. And what makes matters worse is that these were people of good standing, good fame in our society. Law abiding, regular participants in the synagogue, offerers of sacrifices and tithes, donors of alms to the poor, practitioners of daily prayer in private and in public. 
They appeared to be good people who seemed religious and caring about the people and the temple. But God, who sees people's hearts, God knows and sees what human eyes are unable to see. He can see the spiritual pride that gave those people the apparent right to judge themselves better than others. They were apparently transformed lives because there was no real regret. They thought that they were religious, perfect. So who is this Jesus who comes to speak of repentance? And unfortunately, in our own world, many people also think like this. Hey, I don't kill. I don't steal. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I go to services regularly, and I pay my contribution on time. Therefore, I am saved. I am good. And people like this forget the truth that the Bible teaches us in Psalm 14. The Lord looks down from heaven on humankind to see if there are any who are wise, who seek after God. They have all gone astray. They're all alike perverse. There is no one who does good. No, not one. And to that prophet Isaiah adds, we have all become like one who is unclean. And all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. Pharisees, scribes, and priests are like that first son who uses the strategy he knows and says he's willing to carry out his father's orders, but he will not. They are the ones who easily promise things, promise everything, but in the moment of truth, they don't go, they don't do it, and still consider themselves better than the others. These people think that they are just, and there is no need to follow the word of God. They believe that they are saved through their good works, and do not look at the cross of Christ as in need of forgiveness and salvation. In the parable that Jesus told, he says that the father went and gave the other son the same request, same order. And that son initially replied, I don't want to. But then he later changed his mind and went to the vineyard. The second son reveals the same opposition of human nature to spiritual things because he said, I don't want to go. But then, what's new? Yes, something new happens. It is the repentance and remorsefulness. He went to perform the task requested by his father because he repented of his initial response. Now the intention is fulfilled in the action. Intention is fulfilled in the action. And the difference is this between the sons. The son does the father's will after repentance. And this is all calling us that we need to repent and able to move forward. We need to have repentance of our wrongdoings so that we can move forward. In Christianity, people need to acknowledge and repent of their sins if they want to accept Jesus as their Savior and Lord and to seek to correct their lives with the help of the Holy Spirit. And that kind of conversion is true. It is not a facade. It is not superficial. This conversion can take place in the hearts of all kinds of people, even those whom we consider bad. Those who were bad before repentance. They can be transformed once they repent. And once they repent, 
their relationship with God will be made right. And they will be made obedient children to the Father in heaven. The tax collectors and prostitutes within the people of Israel were considered public sinners and were therefore excluded from religious life. Tax collectors were considered unrepentant sinners. They did not follow Jew Jewish rituals and considered as traitors to the Jewish nation as they joined the side of the Romans, collaborating in collecting taxes for the enemy. The tax collectors were not at all popular, actually despised even, as they always charged more than they should. So they were treated as thieves and traitors to the Jewish nation. They were considered allies of the Romans. Prostitutes were excluded from both social and religious life. They were considered public sinners for they violated the sixth commandment of God's law. Thou shall not commit adultery. But it was precisely within this group that the message of Jesus had its greatest effect. There are several biblical examples of tax collectors and prostitutes who changed their lives after hearing the message of repentance preached by Jesus. Matthew, for instance, one of Jesus's 12 disciples is an example of such transformation. When called by Jesus, he did not hesitate to leave his role as a tax collector and just followed his new master. Zacchaeus, another tax collector known for his short height, called by Luke as the chief tax collector, is also an example of the transforming power of Jesus's message. Jesus goes to meet him and stays at his home. And Zacchaeus, through the action of the Holy Spirit, understood that salvation was coming to him when he was considered by religious leaders to be an unforgiving and unrepentant sinner. And Zacchaeus, after meeting Jesus, totally changes his attitude, his behavior, his life. And he decides to give half of his possessions to the poor and stop stealing from others as the custom of the tax collectors. He recognizes his sin, repents, and changes the way he lives. And such is a loving response to God's generous love. And in Luke, we have the example of a prostitute who comes to Jesus, washes his feet with, his with her tears and kisses them. And Jesus promptly announced the forgiveness. Sister, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Another example is the adulterous woman. This woman was about to be stoned to death because of convicted adultery. But Jesus did not condemn her, nor does he allow others to con condemn her. He says, go and sin no more. Those people are similar to the son who bluntly said to his father, I don't wanna fo follow your orders. I don't wanna do what you're asking me to do. But who later repents and does his father's will. It is only by the action of the Holy Spirit in human hearts that this repentance takes place. It is the Holy Spirit who creates faith who produces daily repentance, who creates a new heart, who transforms, who makes us renounce the devil and all his works, who makes us drown our old self by daily repentance, who makes our new self come out and appear, who makes us live and grow daily in truth and good works 
before God. Again, according to Jesus' parable, there are two types of children. He who says he wants to do father's will, but ends up not doing it. And the one who says, despite saying no, later regrets and ends up doing it. And when you look at those examples, what kind of son or daughter, what kind of children are we? Has our mind been transformed by the action of the Holy Spirit? Is this transformation being experienced in our hearts, in our daily lives, in the education of our children, in the relationship between husband and wife, our co-workers, our boss and employees, other members of the society, members of the church? Or do we prefer to put on an outwardly religious life, but without true faith and repentance? inwardly. May God transform our hearts through listening to his words and following his words, making us his true children so that we do what he tells us to do. Amen. Friends, at this time, let us uh, take a moment to give our all, our offerings, our gifts, ourselves to God um, in our gratitude for his mercies and grace. Let us pray. O most gracious and giving God, you have provided for us all that we need for life in this world and for life in the next. Receive now the gifts we offer for your work in this world, gifts which we offer in obedience to your will, in which we pray will result in glory being ascribed unto your name. We ask this through Christ Jesus, your son, the promised one of long ago. Amen. Friends, let us sing. Oh, before we get to our closing song, please unmute yourselves if you can for this part of worship. The peace of Christ be with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Amen. Let us sing our closing praise. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Shout hallelujah, because God's so good. Sing anthems to his beautiful name. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the holy. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. fight for me.
And once again, thank you, Martin and Mari, for putting together today's praise worship video. Here are now these words of benediction. Go in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and always. Amen. Friends, this meeting room will be open for another 10 to 15 minutes. Please uh, stay around and enjoy each other's uh, presence and a time of fellowship. <laughs>